Hello, welcome back to Tempera Grassa, um, the egg oil emulsion for painting in grisaille. Now, when we mix up the, the additional ingredients into our egg yolk, we need to use um, different volumes of those mixtures. Now, traditionally, the, the whole egg it's the eggshell. One of the eggshells was used as the a one hundred percent volume part, uh, and you could like one one volume, one eggshell, two eggshells full of different ingredients, water, etc. But in this recipe, we have in fractions of that one volume part. We we have a full part, we have a half a part, we have a quarter part, and we have an eight part of different different oils and resins to put in. And since the eggshell is not translucent, it's difficult to gauge the right, correct amounts. So what I do in my practice is I pour, I, I, I fill up an eggshell with water and I pour it into a glass jar. And when it's leveled off, I can see what is the 100% one part. And I'll mark it with a, with a marker. And then I'll go down and I'll say, well, that's one hundred percent part, the half of that is fifty percent or half a part, and half of that fifty percent part that's a that's a quarter, and then go down and you know that's an eighth of the part. And those are the measurements measurements we need. A full part, a half part, a quarter part, and an eighth part. These are the ingredients. So there you go. Uh, there's the markings. So make sure you clean out the water from your little measuring jar. We don't want any, want any moisture in this mixture because any water in it will interfere with the with, with the um, with the shelf life of this mixture there you go so the first ingredient we're going to use is damal varnish it could be a matte it could be a gloss doesn't make any difference um, the damal varnish is a resin and it comes from uh, it's a, a tree resin and it replaces the old master varnish we well, used to use as copal and amber resins. And it's less susceptible to cracking and yellowing. And, Dem uh, and Demar has a luscious quality, uh, gives you the luscious quality of old master, old, man, old master varnishes. And it gives a beautiful luminosity to your, your, your layers of paint. So one half part of Damar varnish. The next ingredient is one part, not half, this one part of a drying oil called cold pressed linseed oil, also called um, refined linseed oil. And there you go. Yeah, purified linseed oil or cold pressed linseed oil. It's a refined linseed oil. A linseed oil made from crushing flax seeds under high pressure. Now, this is um this is a traditional binder that car for carrying oil colors and pigments. So it's, it's the binder you find in tube paints, and it imparts a flexibility to the paint film, and it helps temper the brittleness of the previous varnish we use, the Dama varnish. So yeah, that's one part of the cold pressed linseed oil. The next ingredient we're going to use is, um, I think this is the Venetian, Venetian turpentine. Looks like Venetian turpentine. Yeah, that's the Venetian turpentine. Don't confuse it with Venice turpentine. That's something different. A Venetian turpentine can be um, an amber colour to a pale viscous liquid. And it's, um, it's a, it's a, this one is a tree resin again, and it's collected from the European larch tree. It's, it, it's, it was used by the old masters, um, and it, it has a consistency of honey. And it just, it just oozes out of any jar that you, you're trying to get it out of. <laughs> it takes quite a while. And this as a great binder, it, it binds and enhances the gloss of uh, your oil, your oil pigments, and it creates a very tough enamel and jewel-like surface that the, the the old masters created these beautiful 
the luminous jewel-like surfaces to their paintings and it has a very nice smell it, it, if, you, if you smell it it has a, a, a very piney smell of, of a conifer forest I mean it's it, it, it's completely organic like the, like the other the other ingredients and it's very permanent okay now the the other the, the, the next ingredient is something called stand oil now stand oil is the same is it is linseed oil the like like the cold pressed linseed oil but it they call it stand oil because this stand oil has been polymerized by heating it's been treated in a different way and it has a it this one has a, a great anti-yellowing property and it, it also has the property of leveling and smoothing brush strokes so this and it was prized by the old masters because when it was they used to boil it stand it and and they love they love the this the smooth uh, glass like surfaces of the painting they didn't want any little brush strokes in it that that was not the desired effect and this old one is also quite a sticky treacle like mixture and yeah it takes a little while to come out too that'll like ooze out of the glass jar see it'll seem like it's taking forever it does take forever <laughs> so but don't get impatient like saying oh, I'll, I'll leave part of that on the size of the glass no get it all out because you'll need you'll need the complete balanced mixture of all these ingredients because they all work together some will be um, drying fast but be brittle and others will be giving a flexibility to your paint so so you're going to need the exact try and get the exact measurements Yeah, yeah, it takes a while. <laughs> yeah, it certainly helps you learn some patience. <laughs> anyway, all right, the, the last ingredient we're going to use is... Um, is it's is a drying agent it's a siccative because we want we want our medium to dry fast we don't want it to take days to dry so we have a, a great ingredient called a siccative um, an artist siccative I know there's commercial ones you need a, a very refined one an artist siccative you can use different ones uh, Harlem siccative is well known uh, I use a French one and this dries the paint film and for each well it's all like in this one it's like for each egg use one drop but if you like accidentally put three drops in that's all right i mean don't have to freak out but don't don't pour a lot because you want it to dry fast like oh i'm gonna I'll throw a lot more in because i want to be able to, to dry faster because you don't want to upset the balance of all the other ingredients and make it brittle because if you overuse siccatives it can make your paint uh, brittle and, and it'll crack faster you don't want it to crack at all so especially if you're especially if you're painting on canvas a flexible canvas you don't want to be building up too many layers um, usually 10 pair of paintings are done on on wood panel but with this with this one because of the, the flexibility of all the linseed oils and stuff you can use it on canvas I use this I use temper grasser on a canvas the other temper the, the other um, temperas like the full leg temperas I would never use on a canvas it's too delicate and brittle I always use that on a panel so yeah once you've done fit your whisk it around mix up the ingredients prepare yourself a little glass jar uh, clean no water in it very dry and just pour your ingredients into that glass jar you know, like a jam jar that has a not a plastic lid you don't want plastic lid. a good screw top you know um, aluminium lid is good um, so you, you pour that in and you can store this mixture depending on your environment I mean I, I'm in a, I'm in a 
tropical environment where you, you can't leave things out for very long um, I put it in the refrigerator if you're in a cold climate like winter in Europe and stuff, it, it's not so not a big deal this th I mean th this this solution will in my fridge I know in my fridge this lasts for like five or six months in fact I use it excuse me I use it I use it up before I it's ever gone off I've never had it gone off but if it does go off, you, I'm, I'm told you'll know about it. You know, it'll just smell, woof, kind of very sulfurous. So, so once you've done that, you know, give it another shake. Uh, and it's it's a good idea to label, to put a label on this. If you're going to put it in the fridge, you really want to put a label on it. You don't want anybody mistaking it for the... Um, the Caesar salad dressing. <laughs> you don't want, you know, anyone kind of pouring it over their their little salad. <laughs> that would be a disaster. So, put a label on it, date it so you know when you've made it. You know, so it's like, oh, you made that. You know, what month you made it, and uh, yeah, put it somewhere down in the bottom of the fridge you know, or in the fridge door, so you don't get it mixed up with the uh, yeah. Your salad dressings so there you go and 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 that's what you, and that's the end of the the process of mixing up the tempera grassa mixture um, I mean there's different there's lots of different mixtures lots of different tempera uh, mixtures but this is this is what you call the the, the fatty one um, in the f in in the following video, I'll show you how I mix that with a pigment. Traditionally, it's a white pigment. Uh, the old masters would have used lead white, powdered lead white. Uh, no one uses that anymore because it's toxic. Lead is toxic. You can't you can't take the risk. And I, I don't know if you can buy it anymore. I'm not sure. But titanium pigment, uh, powdered white titanium, is easily obtainable art stores and you will just mix that this mixture grind it in to make a, a white pigment a very lean white pigment and that will be used in our uh, in our grisaille painting the gr underpainting in grisaille which I'll show later